Today we're going to be stepping away from using the bright, vibrant colours that I'm used to using and instead we're going to try using a limited colour palette and we're going to see how much of a difference this makes on the finished product. I'll catch you after this. Pickle jar, pickle jar, miniatures, excellent! Hello and welcome to the Pickle Jar. My name's Josh and in today's video, we're going to be talking about painting style, colour choice, attempting new techniques and why using a limited colour palette might just push your painting that little bit further. So just to give some context, here's a little bit about me. I've been painting miniatures for around 20 years and I have over the years tried a ton of different techniques, painting styles and materials. It was only really about seven or eight years ago that I actually stopped trying to emulate my friend's painting styles and their techniques and embraced what I enjoy doing with my miniatures and my own painting style, which tends to be very, very bright and vibrant. Embracing what made my painting my own was the best thing to happen to me and has allowed me to get more and more creative, has helped me improve my painting in general and now I'm at a point where I'm wanting to dabble in different styles as fun side projects rather than to try and emulate somebody else. While I was having a nostalgia trip over my past projects, I realised that in all my time in the miniatures hobby, I've only ever painted a handful of elves. These were actually some of my very first miniatures when I first got into painting in the hobby. These are the last Alliance Elves that came with the Lord of the Rings fortnightly magazine way back almost 20 years ago. I've painted plenty of models since then, but I'm fairly certain that these are still the only elves that I've ever painted. So I figured that I needed to do something about that. Today's model came in a care package from Atlantis Miniatures. It's from their Wood Elf Kickstarter from last year and hand on heart, these are some absolutely gorgeous models. I've got a few more that I'm going to be showcasing in future videos, but for today's project, I fancied using this lovely assassin. I started out working on this model with just the intention of painting it up to show it off for Atlantis. And I soon decided that I could actually try a few different things on this model that I've been either wanting to try for a while and been putting off or that I have tried previously and wanted to have another go at. So these things were non-metallic metal using a limited painting palette and then continuing to work on my skin tones. So I started off by having a go at non-metallic metal. Now I'd recently been challenged by my felling chilling network member, the immersive world crafter, to try this live on stream. Now my first attempt wasn't the best when I used it on this uh, Punisher model on the gun, but if I'm honest, I wasn't too upset with it. I knew that I could obviously improve on this and I got some feedback on what to try next time. So for this elf, I decided that rather than just going for a silver, I'd try to do a metallic green. I figured that that would be more in keeping as I wanted to try and keep the colours to greens and browns, keeping in with the limited paint palette. So starting out work on her armour, I worked a bit slower than normal, thinning my paint down more too. This allowed me to build up the transitions up to highlight points on the armour and was actually a really therapeutic way to paint. Sometimes we get a bit too concerned with our output. How many models have you painted? How much have we done? Are we getting our army painted? And sometimes it's nice to just chill out and just take it steady and enjoy the actual painting part of the hobby. The thing I kept in mind while working on her armor was to focus on where the highlights would be. Trying to keep this and the feedback that I'd received previously at the forefront of my mind seemed to have worked. While I know that this armour is still not perfect, I think it's an improvement on my first attempt and has only encouraged me to try again in the future. Now, non-metallic metal isn't something that I'd usually use for squads in armies or anything like that, but for one-off miniatures it's definitely a fun little technique to try and something different to showcase individual models. Now, I already mentioned that I was taking things a little bit slow with this model. Part of that was because I was just enjoying painting and not rushing it, but I was also being more deliberate with my brush strokes. I was purposefully thinning down my paint a lot more than I normally do, which allowed me to build up smoother transitions between layers. 
Not that I don't thin my paints down already, but my painting style generally is I am very much a shortcuts kind of guy. If I can find a faster, easier way to do something that gives more or less the same result, then I will do that every time. But in this instance, it was very rewarding working slow and steady on this miniature, and I'm really, really happy with the results that I got. Another piece of advice that I have been hearing and that I decided to put into effect today was to use a bigger brush. Now, I usually use my size 0 or size 1, but today I was using my size 2. Now, it still has the super sharp tip allowing me to do all the details and the highlights and things like that, but it has a much bigger belly on it. So it's got a bigger reservoir for holding paint, meaning that it, I can work for longer without having to refill the brush. Now, it might only seem like a small thing because obviously the paint is there on, on the palette. It's not like I've got to go into a, a separate room to refill my brush. But being able to continue working without having to keep refilling my brush, it's weird how much more methodical it is and how uninterrupted that flow is then. This was a huge game changer for me and I've been using the size 2 on projects since this one. Now you saw me add the paint to the palette right back at the start. Now I've not really added too much extra on during this whole painting process and that was a deliberate decision. With this model I didn't just want to paint it nice and job done. I wanted to have a go at a different style and try something new. To improve as a painter I need to keep pushing myself out of my comfort zone so here I am using a limited painting palette and painting in a very muted style. I also decided not to use any washers or shades so everything that you see on this model is painted up in layers. Using only the colours you see on my palette was refreshing and fun to try. Now, I think it also helps to tie the different parts of the model together too. Using only a limited colour palette means that I'm having to mix a lot more and this in turn means that the piece reads as one piece rather than a collection of parts, if that makes sense. For example, if I'm darkening down or lightening up something, I will be adding in one of these colours. So if I want to lighten up the green, I'm adding in the grey that I'm using elsewhere. And same with the skin tone, so it all kind of blends together. So here she is. Now, I had a ton of fun working on her. Not just because of the new things that I was trying out, but because of the model itself. If you want to check out Atlantis Miniatures for more from them, there will be a link down below in the description to their store. Challenging yourself can be scary because it's all too easy to stick with what you know. But if you want to improve, then you've got to take chances. You never know, you might find your new favourite thing. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it somewhat useful. If you did, be sure to leave us a like. If you want to see more from me, then you are very welcome in the chat every Wednesday evening right here on YouTube when I do the live stream. Or you can always pop along to our Discord server. The link is down below in the description, along with our affiliate links and a link to our channel sponsor, Broken Turd. Finally, I want to say a massive thank you to all our channel members. Pretzel, Andy Allen, Chaotic Painting, The Immersive World Crafter, The Hobby Corner, Frost and Fist, Karen Commissar, Thomas Gesler and Amy Root. You guys are awesome, so thank you so much for helping us to continue to do what we do. If you'd like to join them and become a member yourself, then simply click the join button down below. That's all from me, and I'll see you next week with another video. Thank <laughs> you.